view. Hi. Uh, today I'm going to talk on this topic: how well can pin solve for PD solutions with finite time blower. So why pins? Pins leverage the capability of neural networks as universal approximator to solve PDs. Uh, the loss function is composed of two primary components, namely the condition loss and the functional loss. The condition loss is designed to ensure that the boundary and initial conditions of the solution are satisfied, while the functional loss is aimed at imposing the structure of the PD onto the solution. While the training of a neural network can become computationally demanding, it is very efficient when evaluating new data points once trained. Now, we are interested in the Navier-Stokes equation. It is a set of partial, partial differential equations that describe the behavior of fluid flow. The motivation for studying the Navier-Stokes equation stems from the need to understand and predict the complex and often turbulent behavior of fluids. Uh, scientists have been looking for evidence of finite time blobs in Navier-Stokes for a very long time. As is mentioned in the millennial problem, it is extremely difficult to draw any reliable conclusion because of the numerical instability of the equations. Now, blobs are not a rare phenomena. For example, if we take the OD du by dt is equal to u square, with the initial condition u of 0 equal to u bar and u bar equal to 0, the solution to this blows up at t equal to 1 by u bar. Now, in order to assess the efficacy of pins in the vicinity of blob phenomena, we have chosen a very specific case, that of the Burgess PD. So here you can see below is the Burgess PD. Now what is our experimental setup? We solve the PD in the domain x in minus 1 to 1 and t is in minus 1 plus delta to delta for the following initial and the boundary conditions. Uh, these initial and boundary conditions correspond to an exact solution to the Burgess PD that is equal to u equal to x by t minus 1 and here you can see that this blows up when t goes to 1. Now let the output from the neural network be u theta. Then the residual terms for the condition loss are the initial condition rtb and two of the boundary conditions. Similarly we can define the residual term for the functional loss which is given below. Now following is the loss function that we try to optimize in the code. So first we have the functional loss followed by the initial condition uh, residuals and the boundary condition residuals. We define the generation error as this, where u is the exact solution and u star or u theta star is the optimal solution from the pin. We would like to note here that this definition of generation error with respect to the true PD solution is not the same as what is usually called the generation error in statistical learning theory uh, which refers to the difference in the population risk and the sample risk of a predicted right now what is our proposed theory so we build upon the work done by Mishra and Molinado and we derive an upper bound for the generation error that you saw previously uh, in this study we demonstrated that the presence of a non-trivial boundary condition add an intriguing aspect to the derivation even though it's zero viscosity right so we assume that u whatever is a solution is at least once differentiable and u star or u theta star is the pin then the generation error is bounded by this uh, here you see there are three constants c and c1 and c2b right so c is 1 plus 2 c ux uh, and these are the three constants which can be easily de derived once we have delta now what we de did we get from the experiment and the analysis of it so here we show that the plots of the pin solution and the actual solution for the burgess pd uh, here we took the t in the range minus 0 0.01 to 0 0.99 uh, next, we plot the LHS that is the square of the generation error and the RHS which is the upper bound that we proposed in theorem 1 previously uh, for two set of pins, one with width one with width 30 and the other 300 and to estimate the integrals we use the scipy framework. As one might expect, uh, the Pearson correlation coefficient between the LHS and the RHS of uh, that equation increases when the width of the neural network neural network is increased 
Um, so in this figure, we see the RHS versus the LHS plot, right, for different values of delta. So we sit from delta 0 0.95 to 0 0.994, and the collision coefficient here is 0 0.96. So this is for width 30 neural network. And next we have for width 300. So here the collision coefficient is much higher as one might have expected. So what we look to do next, right? Uh, so it would be very interesting to analyze the generation error for 2D Bosnian, 2D Bosnian. Now why 2D Bosnian, right? So Chen and Hao has recently proved the existence of finite time loss in 2D Bosnian with a reasonable initial condition. And 2D Bosnian has a very good, well-known connection to 3D Euler. So if you can find a blow up there, there's a good chance there is a blow up in 3D Euler, which is quite interesting. And it's not exactly as obvious obvious as we saw in Burgess that it's it blows up. We don't know for 2D Bosnik if it blows up or not. We don't have exact solution for it. So that is all what we are looking to do next. Uh, thank you.